Hey guys, Brian delivers you the goods here. Sorry that my hair is a little messy. I plan on going to take a shower, but I'm just like so freaking tired, honestly. But I do have to take a shower before I go to bed. So, excuse my yawning. I'm returning to you for a OK to Matt albums of 2023 video. OK to Matt albums that I wanted to do for this official end of the year video um i had to delay it since this past weekend because um uh, basically i've had a lot of stuff going on mentally and mental health wise and other things aside my sunday wasn't amazing but it was eventful a little bit it was just something i just you know, had to take care of my mom and things were happening uh, that was going on but aside from that she's doing okay so basically I'm gonna discuss from 20 to 1 what the okay to man albums of 2023 are in my opinion and let you know my thoughts on what I think of this list so let's dive into this video now I'm gonna start with number 20 which is bad wolves would die about it um this is an okay album this actually made it at the top of the list it's grown on me throughout time um it was gonna be excuse me honey it was gonna be in my decent to good albums of 2023 but it didn't make the cut unfortunately uh because there were two songs on this album the intro track before you get to the bad friend song on the die about it and then the title track being one of the worst songs for the album not the worst of the worst but it was very disappointing i think daniel's vocals were pretty good in it but the rapping and just how juvenile the screams are in this uh, it just wasn't connecting i don't know there was something about this track that just rubbed me the wrong way but everything else was fine um it's just Bad Wolves Die About It's their new album is okay. It is a tolerable listen. I mean the opening songs are fine, I guess. So basically, um at number twenty is Bad Wolves Would Die About It. Number nineteen is Filter with the Algorithm. I think their new album was okay for what it sounded like. Didn't hate it that much, just wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not. Um, there were a few songs that were hit or miss with me. Excuse my yawning. I'm just like so tired today. It's It's been a day. That I can tell you. It's been an eventful, stressful kind of weekend. And things were happening. So basically, filtered number 19 with their album the algorithm didn't hate this album just thought it was okay i can't remember all the songs but i remember listening to the album that's for sure uh number 18 is victoria monet with jaguar 2 now this was a more r&b fused with soul kind of album and i guess some rap and all that and whatever she was mixing the album with with like reggae too wasn't bad um with how she was singing the majority of the tracks it performed all right so this is an okay album so number 18 is victoria monette with jaguar 2 she did have boys to men in uh as one of the feature artists in one of her songs but honestly it wasn't bad Number 17 is Hollywood Undead with Hotel California Deluxe Edition. Now, this only includes tracks 15 to 20, because um, we've already heard the 14 songs. I thought this was the weakest Hollywood Undead album I've listened to that came out back in August of 2022. Let's be honest. This year's music was something, but not enough to... Make me like 2023. Um, excuse my yawning. I'm just, ugh, just trying to do it without yawning, but that's a little 
it's just, like I said, it's been a day, so I'm just tired. Uh, but yeah, there's Evil, that was an okay track. Um, it wasn't terrible, it was just average at best. I, I don't know, maybe decent at least, but honestly, uh, House of Mirrors was probably a solid track. Um, and then you have Salvation. That was a solid track. It's kind of... I kind of grew out of that track a little later on as the year went on. I don't know. It's good. And it did did sound like original Hollywood Undead kind of stuff that they're normally used to doing. But then the other regular songs come in and they're kind of crap. Um, but honestly... For the overall performance of the Deluxe Edition, it was okay. So, at number 17 is Hollywood Undead with Hotel California with their Deluxe Edition. Number 16 is Kim Petra's with Feed the Beast. Now, the title track is actually not so bad. Um, Alone featuring Nicki Minaj. I don't know. That song is hit or miss. Um, Nicki Minaj's rapping was eh, not very good. But Kim Petra's singing in the track is alright, but when she does the repetitive auto-tune vocals and how she repeats the same lyric, it kind of gets a little bothersome. And there's some other tracks like Coconuts that was, uh, it's a sexual song if you get what I'm, where I'm going with that, so huh. That's what the song is basically pertaining to be about. But honestly, Kim Petra's Feed the Beast album was okay of a listen. Didn't hate it, didn't love it, just I'm in the middle with this album. So, number 16 is Kim Petra's with Feed the Beast. Number 15 is Boys Like Girls with Sunday at Foxwoods. Now this is a okay album. Um, the Outside uh, is probably a favorite song that I like. Uh, the language, I think, is one of the songs. And that one was actually not so bad. It had a good beat. I mean, this was different for Boys Like Girls, but I uh, have not listened to them in quite a long time. And this is their first album in over a decade. And I'm glad they're back, because this is some solid stuff. It's not great, but... They're, there was a song called Physical that ruined the reception. And this album would have been on my decent to good albums, but unfortunately Physical ruined the reception for me for this uh, album. But still, 6.5 out of 10, what I originally gave it when I uh, reviewed it in late October. So definitely number 15. And definitely check this out to see what you think of it for yourself. So number 15 is Boys Like Girls with Sunday at Foxwoods. Number 14 is The Kid Leroy with The First Time. This one was an okay listen. Not crazy for it, but there were some tracks on here that I thought performed alright. And this was not his worst album. This was actually something interesting. But it was weaker than the other projects he did with like EPs and all that and certain mixtape albums so basically uh what just happened was an interesting track um the second song on it was actually pretty good uh, i really liked it with how it was sounding and um can't remember the second track's name but it was pretty good and i'd give that a thumbs up because that was a pretty good track but there were certain other songs like the one with uh what is it, Young Boy Never Broke Again, or whoever the fuck, um, I think that's who it was, his rapping is awful, and he mumbles and all that shit, and I don't like that shit, so fuck that artist, so at number 14 is The Kid Leroy with The First Time, number 13 is Taking Back Sunday with 152, this is an okay listen to, so... Didn't hate it, didn't love it, just there were some tracks I couldn't get behind on this album, but overall it performed okay. So, number uh, 13 is Taking Back Sunday with 152. 
Number 12 is Ed Sheeran with Subtract. Now this is an okay listen. Um, did not think I'd put this in an okay listen. This is weaker than the other albums I've listened to from Ed Sheeran. But most of Ed Sheeran's material after the X album, that's where it starts declining in a more negative way. Meaning the receptions for certain tracks are not very good. But overall, Subtract was okay of a listen. And I know Divide was one of his albums and there was, um, there were some other ones that he did or whatever, Equals, I think is one of them. So basically, uh, yeah, I think Equals was his 2021 album, if I remember precisely. But honestly, overall, I think Ed Sheeran subtract, like, Boat, Dusty was okay, it just wasn't great. It was an average song. And there were some other tracks off there. Uh, Eyes Closed was not my favorite track, but it was, eh, hit or miss. So, number 12 is Ed Sheeran with Subtract. Number 11 is Main Skin with uh, Rush. Now, I did not like the song Blah Blah Blah. That song was crap. And can go fuck itself. But everything else was okay of a listen. I wasn't a fan of this release, but I thought it was okay. So, at number 11 is Main Skin with Rush. I'm gonna try to speed it along so I can get to the remaining 10. So at number 10 is Skrillex with Don't Get Too Close. Now this is an okay listen. Um, I thought Skrillex did pretty good on their on his Quest for Fire uh, album. And then two days later he releases this. Or a day or two later he releases Don't Get Too Close. And that was an okay listen. It wasn't my favorite, but you, I can tell you Quest for Fire will be on my Decent to Good album. So you'll be seeing that next weekend for that. But honestly, uh, Skrillex, Don't Get Too Close is an okay listen. There were some tracks I liked, some tracks I disliked, and some tracks I thought were fine. So I'm in the middle with this. Number 10 is Skrillex with Don't Get Too Close. Number 9 is Theory of a Dead Man with Dinosaur. Now, did not think they'd be in my top 10 this time around. But for this, um, Ambulance was one of the worst songs off this album. There were some other tracks like uh, Sick that was kind of had some cliche lyrics that were very forgettable. And questionable for a listen for this album there were some other tracks like the summer song and whatever other songs they had for this album like just the two of us medusa the two of us or something like that i can't remember the track's name but the title track was actually not so bad um it actually performed pretty well they brought some heavy stuff to it uh, Medusa Stone is what it's called, uh, Stuck the Two of Us, uh, I was thinking of a different song name, but combining it with the one I was thinking of as a single, but I guess I was in the wrong, but still, uh, number nine is Theory of a Dead Man with Dinosaur, it was a ten track album, but it performed alright, number eight is Sam Smith with Gloria, now, Unholy is off his this album and Kim Petras' new album, too. So, it's they did a collab together this year, or last year, for that Unholy song. But overall, I think Sam Smith performed alright with this album. Would I say I was a fan of this album? Not really, but it is in my top ten. So, at number eight is Sam Smith with Gloria. Number seven is The Use with Toxic Positivity. Now, I just wasn't a fan of Burt McCracken's weirdish, not his vocals mostly. I'm used to the vocals. It's just the lyrics for this album 
that kind of downgraded this album's reception into a 6.5 out of 10. It's gonna, I picked it at the lower spot of the 6.5 out of 10 ratings I gave because one, this album's lyrics are not very good. Two, I mean, the lyrics were okay, but there were some moments where the way it executed, I guess it's mostly the way it executed with the lyrics and how it sounded with Burt McCracken singing. There were some songs that did it, did all right, some tracks that were okay and some tracks that were dislikes. So pretty much you, the used toxic positivity was eh, slightly forgettable, but okay. So number seven is the used with toxic positivity. Number six is BB Rexa with BB. Um, I think this was an okay listen. Um, well, maybe about meh, at least. Um, it's, I made it at the top of the meh list, because now we're getting into the meh section of the remainder of this list, because I deemed 20 albums to be on this top 20 thing or whatever, for okay and meh albums of 2023, so I think Miracle Man was actually not so bad. Um, then My Heart Only Wants What It Wants, or Heart Wants What It Wants, or something. I can't remember the, uh, track's name, but honestly, uh, I think the rest of the, the remainder of the album, I'm Good, Blue, was a dislike. It wasn't, I disliked that track. It was the weakest song for the album, but everything else was okay of a listen. Like, Satellite featuring Snoop Dogg was actually solid. But every, like I said, everything else had its hits and misses. But overall, the rest of the album did okay. So at number 6 is BB Rexa with BB. Number 5 is Greta Van Fleet with Starcatcher. This is a meh album. I had a feeling Greta Van Fleet would almost disappoint me with this release. They haven't been releasing great material lately. And, honestly, they need to find their own sound. I know they are influenced by Led Zeppelin, and I get that. That's fine. But it just it sounds like copycat bullshit, in my opinion. It just... If you're gonna do it, I'm at least execute it with the tracks. Stop making your songs so boring and dull. Like, they don't have no substance. They don't authenticate... There's no authenticity with how the songs sound, and it just doesn't execute too well. So, the tracks get pretty dull and boring and forgettable. So, basically, like, uh, there were some other tracks off the album that I could easily forget. And this was a forgettable album. It was meh, but it was forgettable at the same time. So, at number five, is Greta Van Fleet with Starcatcher. And number four is Water Parks with Intellectual Property. I thought this was going to be a step up from the last release. But it's... The last release and this is alright. Um, I mean, it's not great, but it's okay at least. This is more in the mass section of things. Would I say I hated this album? Not really, but I'm in the middle with this album for sure. Uh, like, Real Super Dark was one of the worst songs for the album. I think Closer was probably the only strongest track from this album. Everything else was okay, iffy. Well, there was uh, three tracks I actually did enjoy. Self-Sabotage. Then you have Funeral Grey and Closer. Those are the only tracks I could say would deserve 5 out of 5s. Everything else was hit or miss. Uh, and mostly Real Super Dark was the worst. So at number 4 is Water Parks with Intellectual Property. And sorry about that ding, my friend's messaging me. Uh, number 3 is Duran Duran with Danse Macabre. I chose this to be on... This part of the list. 
in the last three remaining spots. So, I, I don't know. This album, or what this Halloween cover album, or whatever it's trying to go for, um, was meh. It wasn't great. I think the, what is it, Love Voodoo version, I wasn't feeling for it. Then there was only maybe one song I could really get enjoy. Everything else was kind of man forgettable. So at number three is Duran Duran with Dante Macabre. At number two is Kesha with Gag Order. I think this was a meh release. I think Eat the Acid was the only strongest track. Uh, Fine Line is not great. It was hit or miss. Only Love Can Save Us Now is one of the worst tracks for the album. And I think the first song had something interesting going for it, but I don't think it executed too well. I don't know. I'd have to hear this album again, but honestly, at number two is Kesha with Gag Order. I, I just wasn't a fan of this release, and it didn't really do much for me. So I don't have any uh, okay to Matt mentions or anything like that, or whatever mentions I'm going to decide, but let's get to the number one. Number one, drum roll please, Plain White Tees with their self-titled album. Now this was the last okay man kind of album I listened to for the month of November, but I wasn't feeling for this release. This is the maddest album of the year, because um, it's at the very lowest spot at my number one. Because I think it was deemable to be at that spot. Because it was almost a bad album. And uh, Kesha's album would have been at number one. But it didn't seem like it was fit enough to be at number one. Because she at least tried. But didn't try hard enough for certain tracks. But overall, uh, Fire Up. Um, Fired Up, I think, is one of the songs. That was one of the worst tracks. Uh, Red Flags was okay. It wasn't great, but it was eh, hit or miss. But everything else with their new album was alright to okay to forgettable to bad to skip mostly. Um, but it is the mass album of 2023 so the number one is plain white tees with their self-titled album that is going to be it for this okay to man albums of 2023 video i hope you enjoyed this special video it's coming out tonight hopefully if i can get it out tonight uh sometime tonight but i'll set a premiere for it or whatever or Maybe just regularly upload it and get it out to you guys as soon as possible. But still, hope you enjoyed this end of the year video for OK to Man albums. Of 2023. The OK to Man movies of 2023 is going to be coming out in the next day or so. I'm going to try to get it out as soon as possible. But until then, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you in my next review. Have a good night.